Today's lesson is going to be about Bayes' theorem, a, a theorem that's in probability. Um, and when you see the formula for it, it may look a little intimidating. So before we even get started, let's take a deep breath. And remember that if you ever have questions, ask those questions. Um, so let me know if there's any way that I can help clarify. So let's dig right into this. So as I mentioned, uh, these formulas look intimidating. Uh, the formulas are given to you in the formula book it, booklet. Uh, but the good news that I have is that you don't even need these formulas. Um, there's a way that you can use this and apply Bayes' theorem um, if we just know how to use tree diagrams, and if we understand that really important thing I said about conditional probability. Conditional probability is always a restriction of the sample space to the condition. So if you understand how to make tree diagrams and how to find conditional probability by restricting the sample space, then, then these formulas up here are, are good to know, but are, are really sort of unnecessary. There's another way to get through it, and, and I'm going to be showing that to you shortly. So I suppose I need to tell you what Bayes' theorem really does for us. Okay, and at its core, the main purpose of Bayes' theorem basically allows us to change the direction of a conditional probability. So if you know about something like the probability of m given n, Bayes' theorem would give us a method for finding the probability of n given m. Notice the order over here was that, you know, n was the, the condition and m was the probability we wanted. And over here, we could look now, Bayes' theorem lets us find, well, what if m was the thing that was conditional? What would the probability of n be? I mentioned previously that Bayes' theorem can be done instead of using the formula by using tree diagrams. So I have sort of three important pieces of advice about tree diagrams. Uh, most of this is stuff you guys have seen before, but I, I wanted to remind you, right? So first, um, and this is something I haven't made a big deal about actually, um, tree diagrams are most useful when a problem contains conditional probability information. So I sort of want to extend that and say if you ever see conditional probabilities in a problem, try using a tree diagram first. Um, conditional probability can be found in the Venn diagram, but it tends to work a lot better with tree diagrams. So to reiterate, if you ever see a problem that has conditional probabilities in it, you should think about use it, using a tree diagram first. I would say only go away from the tree diagram if there's absolutely no way that you can figure it out. Um, the second piece of advice, and this is something you have seen before, is remember that the event that goes first in a tree diagram is really, really important. That first branch always needs to be the non-conditional probability, okay? You really can't put a conditional probability first. And it should make sense why that conditional probability depends on something, and so that, that thing it depends on has to come first. And the third point is really the same thing reiterated another way. Your conditional probabilities have to be the second set of branches on the tree because they depend on what came first. So without telling you anything else about Bayes' theorem, we're just going to dive right into an example here. And I want you to see that using the principles we already know about probability, we kind of already know how to solve these problems. I just need to show you that you already know, and then we'll get some chances to practice on, on your own. Um, so in this example, a student travels to school by bus on 80% of school days and by car on the other 20%. The probability that she's late is 5% if she travels by bus and 15% if she travels by car. On a particular day the student is late for school, what is the probability that she traveled by bus? So I think the first thing we want to sort of figure out here is to look at these things, see if they're conditional, see if they're not, and, and sort of see what it is that we're looking at. So when we go back and read the problem again, it says that the student travels to school by bus on 80% of school days. Now, is that conditional or not? Hopefully you recognize that's not conditional. It, it, like, it doesn't say like, well, if this happens, then she travels by bus. This is just saying straight up, they travel by bus on 80% of school days, and then by car on the other 20%. So the implication here is sort of that th their transportation is not conditional. Now, as we keep reading the problem, it says the probability that she is late is 5% if she travels by bus. And I hope you see it right there. If she travels by bus, that right there is a condition, right? What we're seeing here is we're seeing something like the probability of late given bus is 0.05. And the probability of late given car is 0.15. So at this point, we sort of see that one thing is not conditional, that's the transportation mode, and we see that another thing is conditional, whether she's late or not is conditional. Now that we know that, now that we sort of dissected this information, if you were going to do a tree diagram, well, actually, I suppose I should say first, it does make sense to use a tree diagram because we see these conditional probabilities. I mentioned in the previous slides, if you ever see conditional probabilities, try using a tree diagram first. So what branch should go first here? 
the branch of the should go first is the transportation mode, right? My first branch here will be the question of bus versus car. And we can fill in probabilities for those. We know that this was 0.8, this 80% this unconditional probability. And we know that this one down here is 0.2, this 20% unconditional probability. Now that I have those, I can go on and look at my next branch. We now know that my next branch is going to be late or not late. And same thing down here, late or not late. Okay? And we can also fill these in. We had this conditional probability. She's late if she takes the bus 5% of the time. So I'm gonna put that one up here. Now that I filled that in, what, what other probability can I immediately fill in? Well, we know that these two branches have to be 100% because she's either late or not late. You're not like kinda late. Um, doesn't matter what excuses we try and make. Uh, this is 95% down here. Those two things have to add up to 100%. Okay. Um, you know, pause the video for a moment, make sure that you can fill in the rest of this tree diagram on your own. This conditional probability down here will be 15%, which means this is 0.85. Again, because these branches have to add up to one. And then remember, now that we're this far, what's the other thing that we can do to fill in a tree diagram? Remember that we can now multiply these branches out, right? So up here along the very top branch, we're gonna have 0 0.04, that's this times this. Here I'll have 0.76, on this branch down here, I'm going to have point, let's see here, zero three, and on this one, point one seven. So now that I have this completed tree diagram, I'm ready to try and answer my question. Okay, It says, on a particular day, the student is late for school. What is the probability that she traveled by bus? This question is effectively asking, what is the probability of bus given late? Okay, it says on a particular day, the student is late for school. So that's the condition, right? Given that she's late for school, what is the probability that she traveled by bus? Okay, now here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think when we do these problems, when we, have, when we want to find conditional probability, we always think about a restriction to the sample space. So in this tree diagram, where do we see it happening that the student is late, right? And it happens in two places. It happens here and here, okay? Like th this thing here is describing all of the things that could happen in this world, and that's why all those things add up to one. But for our particular question, they're saying we know that she was late. These two probabilities, these two things are now my sample space. So down here in the denominator, I have 0.04 plus 0.03. Now within those sample spaces, where does it happen that she traveled by bus? Well, this thing came from her traveling by car, and this one came from her traveling by bus. So if I want to know that her traveling by bus, I'm going to put the 0.04 on the top. I simplify this, I'll get 0.04 over 0.07, which means the answer to my question is 4 sevenths. Okay? So notice I didn't need to use any fancy complicated formulas for this. I just drew a tree diagram. I thought about the things that made sense and then I built my probability out of my understanding of conditional probability. That's Bayes' theorem. I'm not intending to go into it in this video, but for those of you that are interested in seeing how the formula works, I would encourage you to look at the structure of this thing, think about where these numbers came from, and look back at your formula. I think you'll be surprised to see that this work that we did really came out of the formula. We just used the tree diagram to organize our thoughts about it. Let's now move on and take a look at another example. This problem is very similar to the previous problem, and so I'd, I'd really encourage you to pause the video, do as much of this one as you can, sort of unpause and play through it, and sort of check your work as you're going along. Nothing weird or sneaky happens in this one, so give yourself a chance to try this one, um, and then we'll go through it together. So it says, if it's raining in the morning, there's an 80% chance I'll bring my umbrella. If it's not raining, there's only a one out of four chance I'll, I'll take my umbrella. On any given morning, the probability of rain is, is 20% or 0.2. If you see me with an umbrella, what's the probability that it's raining in the morning? So the first thing I want to do is I sort of want to, I want to identify things that are happening in this problem. So right off the bat, I see if it's raining in the morning, there's an 80% chance I bring my umbrella. So this sort of looks like the probability of umbrella given rain is 0 
because it's, it's conditional probably. I see this if, right? Then if it's not raining in the morning, there's only a one in four chance. So that would be the probability of umbrella given not rain is, I'm going to go ahead and call it 0.25. I'm just going to convert that fraction into a decimal. So I've got these two conditional probabilities, and they both seem to be conditional on rain. The next thing we're told is on any given day, on morning, the probability of rain is 0.2. Awesome. They just gave me an unconditional probability of rain to be 0.2. Okay. This sets me up really nicely for a tree diagram. My first branch is going to be my unconditional probability, rain or not rain. And I can put down right away 20% and 80%. And then in my next branch, I'm going to have umbrella and not umbrella, umbrella and not umbrella. And then I, I go through and I look at these things, right? I was told right here that the probability of umbrella given rain, so given that rain happened, the probability of me bringing an umbrella is 0.8 and 0.2. Now, at this point, I get a little bit worried because these probabilities are the same as here. So I'm sort of worried, like, did I use the right things? And so I go back and check. On any given morning, the probability of rain is 0 0.2, 0 0.2. That means, yeah, so it's just a coincidence that this 0.8 is the same as this one. All right, cool. We're, we're fine. Um, moving on. The probability of umbrella given not rain is 0 0.25. So not rain is down here. Umbrella here. So this is 0.25. And that means this has to be 0.75. Again, without reading the question at all, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to fill in the final branches here. I want to find out what the total breakdown of all these probabilities are. So I multiply 0.2 times 0.8 gives me 0.16 up here. This one's 0.04. This 0.8 times this 0.25 is um, 0.2. And this one down here is going to be 0.6. Okay, so now remember these things all add up to one because this represents the entire sample space. This is the whole, like all probability. But now we look at our question. It says, if you see me with an umbrella, what is the probability that it was raining in the morning? This question is asking, what is the probability of rain given umbrella? Okay, so if, if you've gotten this far on your own, but you haven't tried this last computation on your own, I'd say pause the video, make sure that you can see how to use this information to come up with what this probability is. Now, again, remember what we've said in the past, when we have a conditional probability, we restrict our sample space to the condition. So where does this condition of umbrella happen? Well, it happens here, umbrella, and it happens here, umbrella. Okay, so my denominator, my sample space, is these two things put together. Now the question is asking, given that I'm in that sample space, when did rain happen? Well, this is the probability that came from the branch that included rain. So that's the thing that I'm counting. That's the thing that I'm looking at. Okay, so simplifying this, I wind up with 0.16 over 0.36. That's 16 over 36. I can divide both of those by 4 and get 4 ninths. There it is. That's the probability that it rained this morning, um, given that you saw me with an umbrella. I want to reiterate again that this is Bayes' theorem. This is us, you know, th this thing here is what we would get if you followed the formula, that intimidating formula from one of the first slides. But we can use this tree diagram to get to the same result. In this next example, I want to show you that Bayes' theorem and this tree diagram idea can also be used for more than two events. So if you feel confident on this one and want to try it on your own, I'd say give it a shot. If not, sort of walk with me through the tree diagram. Um, but I really would encourage you, attempt to set up the tree diagram on your own first and then, and then sort of check in. All right. So let's see here. It says a sports ball team wants to be sponsored by an organization. If they take first place, there's a 90% chance that they will be sponsored. Okay, so, so right away, I'm seeing this conditional probability. If they take first place, then there's a 90% chance that they'll be sponsored, right? So if they take first place, so it's almost like I'm seeing a probability of sponsored given first place is 0.9. If they come in second place, so the probability given that they came in second place that they get sponsored is, uh, let's see here, 20%. And if they come in lower than second place, there's a 5% chance. So the probability of sponsored given lower 
is 0.5%, or I'm sorry, 5%. Um, and then the problem goes on to give us uh, win percentages, 30% chance they're in first place, 20% they're in second place. They don't say anything about lower than that. So if they don't say anything about lower than that, what is that going to be? I guess they have to come in some kind of place, so this have to add up to 100%, right? So our unconditional probability is with the place that they come in, right? So I'm going to be looking here at sort of first place, second place, and then some kind of a lower place. And I can fill in probabilities for those. It's supposed to be a 30% chance for first place, 20% chance for second place, and everything else, 50% would have to be lower than that. Okay. The next thing that needs to happen here is I need to put in what these sponsorship percentages are. Right. So for each of these things, I'm going to have two branches. I'm a little bit worried that I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to erase this one here. Um, so I'm going to have sponsored and not sponsored, sponsored, not sponsored, sponsored, not sponsored. Um, so again, if, if you haven't done this part of the tree diagram on your own, now that you've seen this much, pause it, make sure that you can do this part on your, on your own. So that's your the probability of sponsored given first place. This would be 90%, which means the complement is going to be, you know, 10%. This branch is supposed to be the 20% sponsorship, which means this is 80%. And there is still this really small 5% sponsorship chance down here, which means we'll have 95% of them not being sponsored. Again, now that I have this, I want to fill out this, um, you know, sort of total probability of all of the different six combinations of things that can happen. So the top branch is going to be 27% the 0.3 times the 0.9, and that means this is going to be 0.03. This one here is going to be 4%, and then this one down here will be 16%. And then down here, let's see here, this is going to be 0.025, and this will be 0.475. Now that we have this completed tree diagram, I go back and I look at the question. It says, at the end of the season, they are sponsored. So this is now given information. They are sponsored. What is the probability they came in first? So this is the probability of first given sponsored. Now again, if you've gotten this far and you haven't done this last part, think about try and do this computation on your own. Okay? So given that they are sponsored, where does it happen in this entire in this entire sample space that they're sponsored? Well, it happens three times. It happens for first place, for second place, and every once in a while for lower than that. That's my sample space. I can write in and say, all right, the only way sponsorship happened is in one of these three cases. Now, out of those three cases, how likely is it that they came in first place? Where, where does it happen that they came in first place? Well, the first place branch was right up here, so my numerator is 0.27. I can now go through and add all of these things together. I wound up here with 0.27 over 0.335, and so if I divide those things, 335, I got this to be 0.80. Six. So it's about an 80-81% chance that they came in first place given that they were sponsored. Keep in mind, the chances of them being first place are only 30%. But if we find out that they were sponsored, there's a really good chance that it was because they came in first place. That's what this probability is finding. That's This is what Bayes' theorem is doing. Um, in theory, there could be four or five or six or 15 different events in the first branch. Um, you're not really going to see problems like that on the IB exam just because they're, they're really cumbersome. But in terms of real world application, there are definitely cases where we could have lots of different things that could have led to something. I think the reason that I mentioned that is Bayes' theorem has the potential to be really, really useful in... Um, in your IAs, in your individual exploration. So if, if probability is something you really enjoy and you want to look at conditional probability, know that you can look at lots of different events for that first branch. Um, you don't need to overcomplicate a problem just because you can, um, but there are plenty of things in the real world that have more than two potential unconditional outcomes. 
So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, you know, coming up with your IA topic is something that, that we're going to need to do at some point. And so I always like to point out when we hit those things. Let's look at one more example. So in this last example, it's going to seem like you don't have enough information. And I wanted to sort of remind you that a strategy for that is when you feel like you don't have enough information, you feel like you're missing something, um, sometimes it can be helpful to define new variables, but you always want to define as few as possible. If possible, only define one new variable. Because as soon as you define a second variable, we need two equations, and it becomes a system, and that can be more complicated. Um, the other thing I'm going to remind you here, we've, we've been doing a lot of tree diagrams today. Remember that when you're given conditional probabilities, you almost always want to find a way to use a tree diagram. Um, so I would encourage you guys to try and work through this problem on your own. Um, if you get stuck, you know, you can look at the beginning of the video and then, you know, again, try and do it on your own. So here we go. Um, if the probability of C is 0.4, the probability of E given not C is 0.7, and the probability of C given E is 0.16, find the probability of E given C. So I think my first thought here is there's a bunch of conditional probabilities here, which means a tree diagram is going to be good. But if we're going to do a tree diagram, it means I need to have an unconditional event to go first, right? The only event that I see here that's unconditional is C for 0.4. So right off the bat, I'm thinking, all right, great, let's make C my unconditional event. Let's put in 0.4 and let's put in 0.6. Like right off the bat, I'm kind of feeling good about this. The next piece of information that's given is this idea that given not C, the probability of E is 0.7. All right, so given not C, the probability of E is 0.7. And so as soon as I'm seeing that, I go, all right, well, then not E would have to be 0.3 because those two probabilities have to add up to 1. And then this last piece of information I get is, is weird, right? They say the probability of C given E, and we ask ourselves, wait, wait but, but, but C was unconditional. That's true. You were given unconditional information, but what would allow us to switch around the order of these things? It's Bayes' theorem that would allow us to switch around the order. Bayes' theorem is the thing that would allow us to find what that thing is. So it seems like in this problem, maybe what's being given is the answer to Bayes' theorem and they want me to find this thing. So sometimes what they're asking you to find can also be helpful. They're asking me to find the probability of E given C. Well, E given C, so given C, E, this is effectively the thing they're asking me to find. I clearly don't know what it is, so let's define a variable. Let's call this X, okay? So what would not E be? What would this be? if this was x. Now, again, we don't know, and you might be inclined to say why, but we want to define as few variables as possible. I know these two things have to add up to 1, so I could just call this 1 minus x. Okay? Now, my next step, my next thought is, all right, now that I have this, let's figure out these end probabilities. Right? 0. 0.6 times 0. 0.3 would give me 0. 0.18 down here. 0. 0.6 times 0. 0.7 would give me 0. 0.42. These ones up here are a little bit funky. This one would be 0.4 minus 0.4x, and this one up top would be 0.4x. And I, I mean, I can't like add those all together because there's variables, and I know variables are scary for you guys, but let's now think about using this piece of information. They're telling us that 0.16 is supposed to be the probability of C given E, could we use Bayes' theorem to come up with an expression for what the probability of C given E is? It says right there, given E. Where do I have given E? Given E, E happened here, and it happened here. So that's my sample space. My sample space has to be 0.4x plus 0.42. Now, in that sample space, in that restricted sample space, where did C happen? Well, this branch right here is the one that came from C happening. So that means my numerator of this thing is 0.4x. And hopefully you guys see what's happening here. I basically came up with a little equation here, right? Now I need to make some space for myself to, to work with this here. Um, so what we now have is I have 0.16, the probability that was given, is equal to 0.4x over 0.4x plus 0.42. 
And now I should just sort of be able to do some, some, some cross multiplication. If I bring this thing over here, I'll wind up with 0.16 times 0.4x plus 0.42 equals 0.4x. And we're probably gonna need a calculator to work through the rest of this here. So let's see here. I'm going to have 0.064x plus 0.0672 equals 0.4x. I'll subtract this thing over here. 0 0.0672 equals 0.4 minus 0 0.064. 0.336 x and then we would just have this divided by the 0.336 and that works out really nicely it turns out that x is 0.2 okay so I sort of wanted to point out here that this was a problem that ended up asking us to sort of use Bayes' theorem in reverse, and we were still able to work through it by just using these tree diagrams and thinking about how we put the pieces together. Remember, if you have questions about these things, if it's not clear to you how all of these things fit together, let me know. Ask questions. Send me an email. Uh, let, let's talk about it. Um, Bayes' theorem is a really powerful tool, um, and I hope it makes sense to you. Best of luck.